Hey guys, it's me, Tatum Thrift Walker. And um, I come on here tonight because I couldn't sleep and I just wanted to get some things out there about my son and, you know, kind of explain a few things to some people. Um, he did come home. Um, he got home, to, it was actually really Tuesday morning at 1 a.m. Um, they drove him all the way from Houston. Um, it's a very long drive and it takes a lot longer when you've got him. They did take him on a stretcher though so he could lay down. Um, which I want to give a huge shout out to Love Transportation. Um, the owner, Mr. Sam, because, um, he kept us from having to drive him back. We did go get his stuff, but then we came back. So it was a huge, huge relief off me and his dad, Michael. I want to get this out there because a lot of you are going to ask what happened to your son. So, let me go ahead and get that out there. I know a lot of you already know, but this kind of just, you know, kind of gets it out there. My, my son was 15. He snuck out on um, New Year's Eve on 2018. And um, the next morning, we couldn't find him. And we thought maybe, you know, we didn't know. We thought, is he at the barn? Is And then we seen that the window was up. But he done that sometimes and would go out of it and meet Jude and his other friend, um, Connor and they would go dirt bike riding but then when he didn't answer his cell phone I was like okay because Joseph knew that was unacceptable here well let's just say on New Year's Day before we was fixing to eat our black eyed peas that was a tradition around here that's what we did and Joseph loved it he loves Thanksgiving here he loves Christmas you know it's just something that our family has always showed you know love and you know just spending time together Somebody had called my phone when I was in the bathroom. Well, somebody come up here. It was a, a neighbor down. It was not really a neighbor, but a friend I knew from high school. Um, she come up here, and my dad hollered, and they jumped in their vehicle. And then Michael got me, and we ran and jumped in his vehicle. And they told me it was Joseph, and it was bad. Because I called her back on the way down. When she said the barn, you know, a lot of people say, well, you didn't know where that was at. No. This is not, and I'm going I'm to try to say this in a Christian way. Okay, a lot of you say, well, you know, you're just saying that because you're mad. No, I'm not. This is a place that I would never let my child hang out at. These are kids that my child, I would never allow them. And they, their parents can say, yeah, because you think you're better. You know, the three of us think they're this or that. No, it's not that. I don't care if you got money. I don't care if you loaded. I don't care if you're middle class. Your shit stinks just the same. So let me go ahead and get that out of the way, okay? My problem is, anybody that knows me knows I can't stand a meth head. I can't stand a crackhead. And, 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 you know, people have always told me that, well, you've never been there, so you don't understand. I don't understand how anybody could do something like that and hurt their family. Um, now, if they get off of it and they're different, then no, I don't hate them. But... I know you're not supposed to hate anybody, but that moment, I can't stand them. But somebody who does not want to help their self, and don't just go through a spell of it, but just constantly does it 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, I have no respect for them. They're, they have a problem, but they don't care. They're not going to stop. They're not going to be who they need to be, okay? They're a piece of shit. And no, I'm not going to say crap. I'm going to say a piece of shit because that's what they are, okay? Um... The place that he was at, let me just explain this to you. And I'm going to say this. When we pulled up, the truck wouldn't even stop when I jumped out. My son was laying under an old barn. It was a two-story barn. I mean, it didn't look, my barn's old, but you can tell there's animals there. Like, there's no animals there or whatever. But he was laying on an old twin mattress underneath the barn like somebody had just slung an old dog out there. A homeless person was laying there. I'm going to tell you this. I don't believe a homeless person would have looked that bad, okay? First of all, he didn't have the clothes on that he left in, okay? Um, he was laying there. He had dry blood. When we got to he was barely breathing. Now, let me put this to you. They had still not called 911, okay? It took me a long time. I always said 12 to 14 hours. Well, with the new evidence in the case that we have, we you know, we've had evidence, of course, um, they can all say that the GBI has dropped it. They can say that we don't have evidence. But you better bet, as long as I'm sitting here breathing on this phone talking to you, 
that we have evidence, okay? I didn't at first, but I do now, okay? Um, my papa and grandma were judges. Um, my godfather's an attorney. Um, a lot of my dad's really good friends are judges and lawyers. We have a lot of um, cousins that are in law enforcement. I took criminal justice in college. No, I did not finish, but um, here's the thing. And I'm not saying that for special treatment, no. Because hey, I ain't getting special treatment. The GBI sure not giving me none. Here's the thing. I've been around. I've watched things. I, I've, I, you know, I've studied criminal justice, and there's just some things. It's and really, it's common sense. But when we found out, it was exactly 14 hours he lay there. Okay, let me give you the different stories of what they told, and. You know, this is me just raw talking to the camera. This is not me sitting with somebody. This is not me, you know, um, different. This is me being raw and the truth and no, you know, cutting in and out, whatever. This is just me, Tatum, okay? Um, he had laid there 14 hours when he was laying there. My dad called 911. Um, he was barely breathing. When they got there, I could see it on the ambulance face. You know, my dad called Sheriff Randy Royal. Randy Royal said, Luther, I'm going to go ahead and call the GBI in. And we're, you know, we're getting him airlifted. So they already knew it was bad. Okay. But they're not going to come out and tell me. I, I knew it was bad, but my mom knew it was worse. Let's just put it that way. Um, as I'm talking, I'm thinking like I'm, I'm, I'm making my mind Give me a photographic memory of what it was and what I seen. As he was laying there, I remember holding his hand and screaming. And then I tried to calm down and I said, I'm here. You know, son, I'm here. You're going to make it. There was never, people think there was a doubt in my mind that he was going to live. There was never a doubt in my mind. The reason there was no doubt is since I was a baby, since I could talk and understand my dad. He, or my daddy, I call him daddy. He has always taught me about the Lord. When I've done things that I'm not proud of, I have always had my faith in the Lord and Jesus Christ. Always. Okay? I was raised a Southern Baptist. Um, but I've been to different churches. And, um, you know, one thing about it is, as long as you believe in Jesus Christ or the Lord and Savior, then, you know, we're fine. My faith. I knew that my baby had laid there that long and he was alive. He was going to make it. And... When they couldn't, they couldn't get in there where, you know, the life light him. So he had to be life lighted from Swamp Road Baptist Church, which was right down the road. Um, I couldn't leave right away into the, to the GBI and, you know, the detectives got there because I had come up on the scene. So, um, the one thing about it was I was crying, then I got mad, but I got kind of in a state of shock, um, the one lady that owned the place, um, she said, or she don't own it. Let me say that. I don't think she owns nothing. Um, she said that, I'm going to go ahead and say it, Ginger Oxford. She said that I acted like I didn't care. <laughs> Let me tell you something, honey. I do care about my child. I think it was a part of me, I was in shock because I wanted to rip your urethra tube out and shove it up your ass. Okay. But a part of me knew at that time I couldn't do anything. I wasn't thinking. It was like I was in a dream. And you know how when you think you're dreaming and you want to reach over and you want to say, somebody, please pinch me and tell me if this is true. Is this really happening? But I knew it was. But a part of me wanted to just go to sleep and wake up and be like, this is over. This didn't happen to me. This didn't happen to my child. Because it happened to all of us. My whole family. And... They didn't tell me right then, so I'm going to skip to this part. We finally got, they got there and they told me, Tatum, I know you want to go, go. We run to the house, you know, I jumped some clothes on. I didn't even put makeup on. I didn't care about that. I threw some clothes in a bag like for overnight because, I mean, it was in Jacksonville. They life out of him to Shans. And he was either going to go to Savannah or Shans. And I really honestly think it was God because if there is one little shift in the wind, they have to go in the other direction. And there was. Because there was a neurologist at Shands that's one of the best. So, um, the doctor, the neuro, the neurologist called me on the way down there. And he said, Miss Walker. Or he said, is this Joseph's mom? I said, yes, Miss Walker. And, or Tatum. And he said, I'm going to be honest with you. 
Joseph has got the biggest hematoma on his brain or in his head, you know, swelling and all that I have ever seen. I need your permission to go in. He said, but I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't look good. I said, do you believe in God? He said, yes, ma'am. I said, and you're a great surgeon, I know. I said, you go in there and you do everything you can for my son. That's all I'm asking for. He's going to be fine. And I remember I cried. My mama and Michael was crying, but he had to stop. You know, he was driving. And we were all just, you know, Michael kind of slowed down. And he didn't hold his head down because he was driving. But we all prayed. I prayed for everybody. I prayed everybody in that operating room. I prayed that, you know, he was going to live. And I knew God was going to answer my prayers. And, you know, when they went in there, and I remember the first time that I walked in and seen him. It was like he was my son, but he wasn't my son. And anybody that has seen him in the hospital knows what I'm talking about. Now I will share pictures. At first I wouldn't, you know. Um, a lot of people ask me other things too. And, you know, that was the biggest hell of my life, or as I thought. But the months up to it was even going to be worse. I was literally bullied. And people ask me, what do you mean by that? I was bullied every day in that hospital to pull the plug on my son. And a lot of people say, you mean pull life support? I say pull the plug because that's just, we're old school and, you know, I'm country. I'm from South Georgia. And that's that's just how I think about it. And it was like he was an old dog that they needed to put down. And I understand science. Let me say this. I understand science. And I understand that that's what people need to believe, that that's what you do if you think you can only do so much. But nobody l understood and would comprehend that he lay there for 14 hours. Um, when somebody is literally telling you that there's nothing they can do, they can just that they can just keep giving him stuff, and is that what they wanted you to do? And I'm thinking, yeah, that's what I want you to do. You, you know, you keep taking care of him. Make sure he's okay. Um, he constantly had pneumonias. Um, that was one of the hardest things. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of details because it just bring back, brings back a lot of old wounds. Um, but the way I was treated by certain people is unacceptable. You know, I was questioned on my motherhood. Um, you know, I had nobody around me or my friends or family, but there were some people who, you know, said some bad things on a Facebook group. And of course, you know, people are going to take up for me. Um, but I'm not going to mention who that is because like I said, it, it brings up old wounds. And, you know, I've had to do a lot of soul searching and learn that you do have to forgive. Um, because I mean, that's what God says. You have to forgive, but I can't forget and I never will forget. And will I ever trust certain people again? No, because in a situation like that, how can you just be, have no hope for somebody? But you know, I think a lot of people claim to be Christians and they say that just because you go to church and I want to get this out there, it is great that you go to church. It's great if you sit and watch John Hagee on Sunday if you can't go to church. But when you don't have faith in the Lord, how are you a Christian? I, I will never understand that. And I think a lot of doctors, you know, they lose a lot of faith in science. Um, but I think the doctors and every and, and everybody that was at Shands, because they took wonderful care of Joseph, and they helped save his life. But the way I was treated, I don't think any mom should ever have to be treated that way or anybody period it ain't just you know a mom it's a daughter or a son or you know anybody shouldn't have to be treated that way or bullied um if i ever have anything to do with it i'm gonna get to washington i'm waiting till another president comes you know in there um but i am gonna try to do something about that and another thing i think that you all should know if you're an organ donor go change that immediately I know you're saying, I'm a, I was an organ donor. I'm not anymore. But here's the thing. That does not mean that I won't put my will that my husband can decide to share my organs. But the reason it's not on my license is because of this. Um, did you know, if you're an organ donor and they say you're brain dead, you don't want your, your spouse or whoever's in charge of your out of state or your will, 
can say, well, I don't want to pull, you know, I don't want to pull the plug yet. I want to give it time. They could say, oh, you can't do that because they're an organ donor. They're like a bunch of, I don't even know how to say it. I mean, it's like putting a, a big hamburger or, you know, a steak in front of a line and saying, don't eat it. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. Um, but I had a case that a lady, I tried to help her and there was nothing I could do. There's nothing she could do. They pulled the plug on her child and she wasn't ready. They told me and they told her they never told me Joseph was brain dead. That's a lie. They told me that Joseph was brain dead. The next day I told them to go back and do another test. And then it was a couple of days and they did a test and there was brain activity. Then they said there were little brain activity. I don't care if there's a millimeter. There's brain activity. He's not brain dead. Um, Joseph then, you know, after a month and a half, I fought. My husband got him in Shepherds. Um, I want to say this again. My husband is my rock. He is the love of my life. He's my, you know, I believe that you might can have more than one love in your life. It, it, you know, at some point. But do I believe you have more than one soulmate? No, I don't. He is my soulmate. He has been there. He has held my hand. The first night it happened, we went straight to the um, chapel. We prayed. You know, um, also everybody can have more than one parent. Um, you know, he has a biological father, but he calls my husband dad. And, you know, he's calling daddy Michael. But one day he just out of the blue. And that's another thing. You never tell your child what to do. Let them figure out on their own if they want to call one daddy and one dad or, you know, whatever. You let them make that decision for themselves because you shouldn't put pressure like that on them. And I never have with Joseph. Um, it's been said before I have, but I haven't. Um, he called him dad one day and I looked at him and I said, why are you calling him dad? I don't say dad. Like, that's just a word. I don't know. I always call my daddy, daddy, you know. Um, he said, because he loves me and I want to call him dad because he takes care of me a lot. And I said, okay, whatever. So, you know, you can make things like that work. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't have another parent or, you know, whatever. It just... It's, I'm lucky to have somebody in my life that treat treats my son like his own, you know. And um, But when we went to Shepherds, he was still in a coma. Um, he was there about three and a half months, almost four, I believe. Um, they worked him even though he was in a coma. And, you know, people were saying I was lying. He wouldn't do anything. And then all of a sudden... One of my prayer warriors, prayer, how to say, I can't, I'm so country, prayer warriors, she told me, she said, Tatum, you need to post that. And it would show, like, when he was, he would do what you call um, signals. Like, um, you know, he would blink his eyes so many times, or he'd do his hands. And because he wasn't completely out of a coma, he was in still in the state of, of that. Um, there was a lot of other things I went through. I won't, I don't talk about that. Um... I was still bullied to a certain extent, but Shepherds was really great. Um, he got sent home, um, and then they told me, they said, Tatum, I believe him being sent home, I believe he'll wake up. Being there at the farm and, you know, everything. Well, it was two days he was home when he woke up. Um, my dad still laughs because one of the first things he said was, Pa, <laughs> and then me. Um, but he stayed home for a long time, about a year. Um, he did do some physical therapy in Brunswick. Um, we had, you know, I'm going to try to make this short. I don't want to have to go through everything. Um, but he, you know, went from a, a full ventilator to a trait with a ventilator. You know, the doctor said he would never, ever come off that. He'd come off that. Um, they said he would never come off the, um, trait. He came out of the trait. They said he would never be able to eat, you know, solid foods. He eats anything he wants. Um, he doesn't have any tubes. Um, he has a baclofen pump and what that is, it's underneath the skin right there and, um, down here or, you know, down here, point down here. Um, what that is, is it's a, it's a pain management and it stays in him. Um, it keeps him from, he had the drop foot and it, his foot would do like this. And we had a great doctor in Savannah I found and he was awesome. He does, oh my God, he does spectacular work. And Joseph's foot is completely, you know, great now. Um, 
So we went through all that, and then we got him in at Choa's in Atlanta. They were great. He did great at in-house. He was upstanding. Actually, he took his first steps there. Um, that was great. And then outpatient, they just didn't think they had what he had, so we sent him to Houston, and he lived um, there. They didn't want us there because they wanted him to learn, you know, um, being more independent. So um, he did great there. We stayed there for three and a half months. And now we are looking at either after the holidays, sending him back to Houston if we find somebody to help pay for it. Because people's like, well, don't you have good insurance? My husband has excellent insurance. It's United. It pays for everything except this is a private facility, 26 acres. He has his own apartment. They cater food. They have private nurses, private CNAs. Since they pay for it during the day and all that, they don't pay for that private, you know, no, I mean, we checked every insurance. They want no insurance to that um, because it's a type of facility. You know, if it would have been a state facility or something like that, that would have been different. But this is what we wanted. Um, the price out of pocket is 12400 a month. So that was killing us. Um, so now we're either going to look, we're trying some grants and some stuff to see, you know, if we can get him back there. And if we can, that's where he wants to go. If not, um, we're going to send him somewhere closer. And then he'll stay there for anywhere from six months to a year. To when, I'm leaving it up to Joseph until Joseph feels like, okay, I can walk. I can, you know, not just take a step or just sit up. But I can do this and I can do that. And then he can come home for good. But I will always make sure he still does therapy, you know, so he can just keep improving. Um, I've learned that the brain is a magnificent, I mean, it's something that is very, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm having a brain fart, y'all. Um. You never know, let me just say this, you never know what it's going to do, but it's, it's, it's just remarkable. It can do, I mean, it, the way it heals and it does, I mean, you can't, I mean, it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's just remarkable. Um, and he's doing a lot better. He is. Um, today, and this is something I want to get into and I'm like, I, I mean, I've been on here like 20 minutes, so. I don't want to just overdo it. I do want you all guys to share this. I want y'all to make this go viral because I want, if I can help one person learn from mistakes of sneaking out and thinking people are your friends. But today he had what they call a, um, he stormed. It's like seizures, but it's, it's neuro, it's neuro storming. It's where it looks like they're having a seizure, but it's from their, their, I mean, I know seizures are from brain, but it's just different. You need to, you can look it up and Google it. Um, I get mad when I see him do that because I think about what they have did. Ginger Oxford to me was probably the worst person of all of this because she was the adult, but she was a druggie, of course. But she was an adult, and she told them, do not call the law. Um, she let him lay there. Um, they, sell, he, they said he fell from a barn. He never fell from a barn. The thing is, my son was hit in the back of the head with a shovel. Cameron Cox did it. His mom tells everybody, no, he didn't, and that I'm a bully, and that I'm lying. But let me ask you this. Why is it so many people have come to me and told me the exact same story? People who don't even know each other. People who do not run in the same circles. And also different ages. Now, y'all tell me that. And if he fell from a barn, even the EMT said that was a lie because there was one spot on his head and it was like an object hit it. That and there was no more marks and there was semen on the ground. There would have been blood. There would have been some type of evidence. But these people cleaned a lot of this stuff up. I have proof of the time stamp, the last picture he took when he was there. Trying, they were trying to say he was drunk. He, he couldn't have been drunk at that point. Which they took an alcohol test. Of course, it wouldn't have been all the way accurate because he lay there for so many hours. But... With the type of injury he had, it was still, you know. Um, 
I'm not saying he didn't have a drink, but he couldn't have been drunk at the time. There's no way. Um, also, we, we know a timestamp of the last time he talked to a friend. And when this happened, because somebody left that place and went and told, hey, man, they did this. A lot of these people didn't want to come forward because Cameron Cox has been a bully. She calls me a bully. Her son has literally bu bullied people and told them, don't say nothing or this is what I'm going to do to you. He even got it back to me, or this was supposed to be told to Joseph, that if he did wake up, he better say that he was on his dirt bike. <sighs> They're the only names I'm going to say tonight because the other ones have kind of slacked off, but y'all all know who they are. But this is what I want to say. I got a message yesterday that Cameron Cox was involved in something else. Of course, he's been involved in several things. He was supposed to go to court yesterday, and they stopped again because of his medical. What about my son's medical is what I want to I wanna know and understand. Okay, Cameron Cox was paralyzed at one point. He's not all the way paralyzed now. Um, there's people willing to testify that he can stand up, and, and there's certain things that he can do. Um, It's also been said that I said he got what he he was deserved. This is what I said. Okay, first of all, this is what I said. Y'all heard me on a lie before. I pray about that boy. I pray for his soul because if he doesn't, if he doesn't, if he doesn't feel any remorse, and I'm not saying he don't in some ways. I think the remorse he feels is because he's hurt now, or he got hurt. But here's the thing. I did say God says vengeance is his, and I. I believe in karma and I believe in vengeance. And I believe that what happened to him has a result of what happened to my son because I believe God is working on him and trying to tell him he needs to come forward and tell it himself. But we don't need him to. We got enough evidence. Um, so if anybody, you know, I don't tell no names and I will never say no names. And I'm trying to work with them now where their names will never get brought up. They, I mean, there's ways around it because... I don't want them scared, you know, and walking around. I mean, I'm not worried about me, but I don't want certain people scared about it. But, you know, all of you that reaches out to me, especially telling me what Don Smith, his mom says, you know, um, about me being a bully and that her son didn't do this and why am I doing this? Here's the thing. What would she do if my son hit her son with the back of the head with a shovel? Well, my son wouldn't have done that because he didn't need to, you know. He's, I mean, we don't do things like that. I don't pick up something and hit somebody. I pick, just use my fist. But, you know, that's the difference. And I understand her other son's in jail, in prison, or whatever. But here's the thing. I know that's her son. I know, you know, she feels like she needs to protect him, but that's not protecting him. What is eating her up is the fact that she knows what he did to my child. And she's covering it. All we, all I could have ever, ever asked for in a perfect world is them to admit what they did themselves and say they were sorry. They never asked how my son was. They never, they never cared. But you know what? They don't have to watch my son every day. They don't have to watch his senior year of all his friends playing football, riding their dirt bikes, you know, going hunting with Michael. That's what he loved to do. And Michael goes through a lot with that. Michael, it hurts him something terrible because that was his riding dog. And he will tell you that this day. And it hurts me that he has to go through what he's went through. And instead of them saying, I'm sorry, or not once have I heard them say they were sorry for what happened to him. All they do is negative and talk and talk and talk. But y'all, they think they got away with it. That's what really baffles me, is they really think that they have got away with it. And I, you know what? They don't, none of them, know me or my family to think that they got away with it. They are going to get in trouble for what they did. They're going to be, you know, held accountable for it. And, um, 
it's going to be done the right way, though. I won't always say that. They want me to do something stupid, but I ain't going to. Um, I don't believe in doing something like that. I believe that everything has consequences, and uh, I believe in God's going to handle it. But um, I just felt like getting on here, y'all have so many questions for me on Joseph Strong and Justice for Joseph, and, you know, um, oh, and all you out here who like to watch the videos and then run back and tell certain people everything I do or what Joseph's doing, do you ever think there's a reason that I don't have certain people on here or, um, which I don't care what y'all tell the people who done it's family. I don't even care what y'all tell them because I tell them to their face, but they ain't gonna get close enough to me to do it. But, um, I love all y'all so much. Thank y'all for loving my family, my son and praying for him and doing what y'all do because it really means the world. And, Please share this and um, let's make another video go viral because all these bad things happening now, you know, a lady reached out to me the other day and I had actually talked to uh, a lady at Houston about becoming an advocate finally and I decided to do it because if I can help one person, you know, I'm going to try to speak in some high schools and, you know, stuff like that and then I'm going to speak at some brain injury places and, you know give these people an opportunity to understand, you know, things that maybe we can prevent. So I love all you guys. Justice for Joseph and Joseph Strong. Be kind to one another and love one another. I love you guys. Bye.